Brian, we're here at the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk and getting a chance to um, really um, talk to you about some really essential things yeah. that, that God has done. And really, with Alignment Media is about um, how, we want to ask the question, how have you aligned yourself yeah. with the assignment that God has placed on your life? You know, I think living as a non-believer for so many years, I align myself with a culture in Liverpool, like did I fit in or not? And then becoming a skateboarder, I align myself with skateboarding culture. And then coming to faith, it was almost okay. Now as a believer, you know, late in life at 24, uh, how do I align it with God's call? Some people are raised in the church where they're like, hey, I'm just gonna live however I feel because God's good. But for me, it was more like, I gave so much of my time to professional skateboarding, you know, six, seven hours a day, and I loved it. And for me, it was when I came to faith, and again, you might have heard me share even today that verse in Ephesians 2.10 where it's workmanship. God, what you're saying to me, and I think people don't get this a lot, there's exactly enough time in every day, there's exactly enough gifting in you, you are absolutely made to fulfill God's call. So if I'm his workmanship, the way this bench can be fulfilled as I sit in it, God, what do you want me to do? And now the hard thing is figuring out what he wants you to do because we know it's the gospel, we know it's loving people, we know it's being an encourager, we know it's putting our hand to the plow, but for me it's been that verse that says your gift will make room for you, and that the gift and call of God's on your life, so for you, God made you, and this is what it is. For the filmer, this is the way you're created. For me and what I'm gonna go do, and personally it's been more, I feel like being intentional about getting out the way but hearing God and what he's saying. And you might have heard me say it in there, you know, that, that our ministry is the biggest hindrance to God's ministry. Yeah. I can do great, great things that are furthering my vision. I don't realize it because I'm an Englishman living in America. I'm a consumer. When I get to here at 40, when I get to here at 50, when I get to here at 60, what am I gonna miss that God has that might only last for three months that's vision right then? What am I not gonna take on that might be a 30 year vision because I'm intimidated, because I'm doubting God? So. I guess to be practical as an evangelist, as kind of a pastor, preacher, teacher, it's more like, Lord, who's calling me to go do what? I'm ready, in and out of season. And God has been faithful since I came to faith to invite me to speak places, to do marriage conferences, speak at men's ministries. Really, my mission is a missions, marriages, ministry. Wow. Because I go with mission and I'm training up people as an evangelist. And I'll go into a church and do a couple sessions on marriage because of our crazy story. And then ministry is like, can you go speak at the rehab down the street? Yeah. Hey, can you come do an interview? Hey, can you come reach this person? So to me, it's a bit more ambiguous, but to the to the gifted or the talented or the driven entrepreneur businessman, and I would say just line it up with what the Lord's doing. There should be a piece about it and be diligent. Outwork other people to work for God. I don't mean do more hours. I mean, just be like, God, you've, you've allotted this to me. I'm gonna go after this and with all that I have. And I'll jump in and then let us carry on. But I had a friend in Australia, I must have been 80, and he went outside one day and said, Lord, like, I, I need to do more for you. What do you have for me? And he lived on this cliff, you know, down in Sydney. I mean, beautiful old man and his wife. And he had firewood in his hand. And that verse came to mind, <laughs> use whatever's in your hand. So he began to go down to the neighbors and knock on the door and say, who needs firewood? Well, 10 doors down was a Muslim gentleman who did not like God in, in our sense, did not like the neighbors, need a firewood. And the guy began to bring in firewood. The Muslim guy was sick with cancer. And as this transition happened, the guy went in the hospital and you know who he called for? The firewood guy to come sit with him in the hospital and enjoy the conversations and I'm saying, I'm not saying like about firewood, <laughs> but that's a great example great. of fulfilling the Great Commission with what you had in your hand that day. So, translation <laughs> says, yeah. for lack of vision, people cast off all restraint, or yeah. they go their own way. And that's the most common translation of but, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I just think of like how important that is that that God says that without vision, people yeah. literally die. They yeah. go away that there's not they're not designed to go. And I just loved how you quoted that verse, and I just feel like that's a really important message to our generation, is that yeah. why is the world so crazy right now? Because yeah. people have no real vision and think for about it, lives. even as you're saying it, all that Satan really did is said, here's another vision. So think about it, I, and I've, I've said this a lot, especially when I'm preaching, I'm like, guys, this is all the truth there is. So everything outside of this is false. I'm gonna say, 
I'm not saying when someone creates a work of art or designs something that's fake, I'm saying, no, that's something that creative God gave creative people to do. But everything that comes outside of that, when Satan says, did God really say? So he has you and me, and I got in trouble the other day, you know, it was a little bit controversial, but not really, but just even a famous Elon Musk quote that, you know, I love Elon Musk, my friends drive Teslas, whatever. But he said, if you really want to succeed at a lot of things, you have to work 80 to 100 hours. And I get these things all down my feet. You know, I only get 10 hours sleep. I mean, at five hours sleep, money never sleeps. And I go, I get it. But if I was your pastor, I'd say, bro, if you want to work 80 to 100 hours to stack up millions and create an empire, I get it. But probably your marriage isn't going to work too yeah. Probably your kids are going to resent God and mammon is going to have to become your God. So I believe within the context of what God has made you for, is something he's given you to do that will provide for you. Now here's the biblical thing that I, I've been preaching on the Ten Commandments a lot lately and it, it blows my mind, but literally Israel never had a Sabbath. So there's you and me, a Hebrew. We never had a Sabbath. We're building blocks every, every day, seven days a week. Pharaoh has enslaved them and it's all about production. God comes along and says, I'm gonna give you a Sabbath. Now we have rest. I mean, thank you, Jesus. Whether you celebrate it Friday to Saturday in Jerusalem, Saturday or Sunday, we pretty much have a two-day weekend. That didn't even exist. And now what are we trying to do? Our God has again become, no, 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 we need more production. We gotta make more videos, we gotta make more bricks. Even for the Christian, I have to be the lead CEO because God has blessed me. So we are still sacrificing our time and our resources. And here's why that verse is amazing about taking a Sabbath. It is a thing of faith for me to trust that if I work hard by the sweat of my brow, six days out of the week, that God's gonna provide for me what I need. That's hard. Because like Pharaoh made them work for production, I now wanna work for production for myself and my own kingdom. And I'm saying, say, man, you don't need to be the best entrepreneur. You need to be the most kingdom-minded entrepreneur. My son playing baseball growing up, is he gonna be a pro ball player? I don't know, but he could be the most biblical coach. I mean, he got his nose broke playing baseball, he doesn't play anymore, but God might not have called you to Princeton, or to Harvard, or to be this or be that, but what he's called you to, be faithful with what he's given you, and trust in the time he's allotted to you daily. Don't chase these things, because then, I don't know Elon Musk, I mean, but I'm saying, now you're such a significant player on the world scale, and your cars, your businesses, genius mind, but are you now enslaved to that? And the next 30 years is gonna be going up the mountain more and more, because if you fell from grace, or and enslaving others, right? You're like, so the key is, is what can you align together with him yeah. and get done together with him? Yeah, yeah. And I would say who's around practically, uh, who are the people you know? I live in Huntington Beach, there's a lot of businesses, a lot of ways to do things. If I wasn't um, pastoring and traveling kind of like an evangelist, I'd say, okay, well, who's around me? I'm willing to come work hard for you. Here's some creative ideas of what we can do. Lord, shape this. Come on. I'm right now helping with him, a friend that's doing like this whole new, very healthy oil thing. Not like the whole, you know, the other ones out there. Yeah. This is his wife going through stuff. They try to help it. And so they're doing it. And it's people that, you know, launched massive, massive, massive brand. And like, Brian, can you come and sit on our board? Just spiritually, and I go, well, why would you want me? We just want you to help us consider what's biblical in our decisions wow. to help him guide us as a pastor. Wow. And I'm like, so you want me to sit with people who are worth, you know, four or five hundred million dollars? And really, some of them want me to go in there and kind of be a witness to them, but they go, we want to do this all structured under the Lord. And so, amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, thank you, buddy. Of course. Thanks it's for a preaching pleasure the gospel. hanging out. Thanks for reaching these people. Thanks for God doing what God called you to do. Amen.